everyone, and welcome to the 2017 year update and Q&A video. 2016 was another great year for the channel, and I have even more great things planned for 2017. Since I got so many questions this time and I want to get to all of them, I'm going to try to keep the updates short and to the point. Let's get started. One of the most popular things I did last year was the new video series Train Talk. I plan to do even more of these this year with an expanded schedule from the six episodes I did last year. I'm going to try to release one on the first Friday of every month, but we'll see how that goes. Speaking of train talk, the first episode came out last week, so be sure to take a look at that if you haven't done so already, and vote in the poll for your favorite long-distance Amtrak route. Uh, you can vote in the, the poll in the video. There's a little eye in the top right hand corner of the screen. You can click that and then scroll down and there should be a poll at the very bottom and you can vote for your favorite route there. In addition to trade talk, I may experiment with some other narrated video series, possibly about tourist railroads. I'm planning on doing some more galore videos this year too, so keep an eye out for those. There will also be more toy train videos this year and I'm working on getting some sort of a model train video together. So, um, more updates on that in the future. You've probably noticed that some of my videos have had special music in them performed, and in most cases written by my friend who goes by the uh, name The Mysterious Mr. Shoe. Many of you have asked me if there's anywhere you can listen to some of the music he's done for the videos. Nothing's been set up yet, but he's told me he's working on getting together a SoundCloud account where you'll be able to stream the songs on the internet. Um, when he's done setting that up, I'll try to let everyone know. 2016 was an incredible year for the channel, and it was also the year that we reached the major milestone of 100,000 subscribers. Once again, a big thank you to all of you for that. As part of this, YouTube sends out this little plaque that they call the Silver Play Button Award. Some of you have asked me if I can show it, so when it arrives, I'll post photos of it on the Facebook page so you can see it there and I'll try to include it somewhere in one of my future videos as well. Finally, let's talk briefly about where I will be filming this year. I get so many suggestions for where I should film that I thought I'd let you decide a little bit this year. There's so many places I'd like to go, so I'm gonna let you vote for the top place you'd like to see me film this year. I can only put five options in the poll, so I'm gonna go with the geographic regions of the United States plus Canada because that was so heavily requested. Uh, click on the little eye icon in the top right corner of the video if you're watching this on a computer and you can vote in the poll. I'll try to visit the top two regions that are voted for in the poll this year. If you want to provide me with a more specific location or you have a different suggestion altogether, leave those as well uh, in the comment section below. All right, I think that does that for the updates. Now let's get to some questions. There's probably about 50 of them, so I'm gonna to try to get through them as quickly as possible so I make sure to get to all of them without making the video too long. All right, let's get started. How many heritage units have you caught in your rail fanning career so far? Well, I've caught three of the Union Pacific heritage units, and if you count the Amtrak ones, I've, I've seen all of those as well. Uh, next we have, can you talk about the Rio Grande narrow gauge and history of railroads in Pennsylvania? Yes, in fact, one of the train talk episodes that I'm planning on doing this year is going to be about the Rio Grande narrow gauge, so keep an eye out for that. Do you plan on coming to Canada anytime in 2017? I hope to, so if you want me to do that, make sure you vote for Canada in the poll of this video. Next we have, do you have any plans to film steam engines on the east coast like the Nickel Plate Road 765 or the Norfolk and Western 611? I don't have anything set in stone right now, but if I can do it, I'm going to try to work that out. Are you going to film Western Maryland? I'd like to get back to Western Maryland and the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad at some point, but before I do that, I'd like to travel to some new places to get more video of other parts of the country that I haven't been to before. All right, next, will you be filming trains in Texas, the Texas State Railroad, or just freight trains, and what about all aboard Florida? I would like to film the Texas State Railroad, but I'm not sure if I will get to it or not on my next trip to Texas. I haven't planned that far ahead yet, but I'll try to make it work if I can. And I'm sure I'll get to All Aboard Florida once that starts running, but for now, it's the same story with that. Are you going to do a new intro for 2017? 
As of right now, no, not yet. It is always possible that I'll make one later this year, but I'm pretty happy with the one I have right now. Do you plan to see ATSF 2926 in Albuquerque, New Mexico? Also, what is the best train you saw this year? I do not have any solid plans right now, but I would like to see 2926 once it's fully restored. The best train I saw in 2016 would probably be either the Sioux Line 1003 Steam Locomotive or the AEM7 Farewell Special. Either one of those. Those are both really cool. Next question is LS and I number 18 on the San Luis and Rio Grande still running? Uh, no, it's been down for about four years, and as far as I know, the future of steam on the Rio Grande Scenic Railroad is uncertain at this point. So, I don't know if it'll be running anytime in the near future, or, you know, what the story is with that. What is your favorite steam locomotive that you have seen? Probably the Southern Pacific Daylight number 4449. Any plans to film in the KC area? How do you get the ability to travel so much? I don't have any current plans to film in the KC area, but like everything else, I would like to eventually. As for travel, I try to do all my traveling at once and do as many things as I can over a short period of time. Where is your favorite railroad crossing? Hmm, I'm not really sure. I really like to film at Cassidy Street in Oceanside, California because it's pretty close to me and it has a nice sweeping curve. Could you film in Corona? Um, yeah, I've actually filmed in Corona within the last year, but I'll try to film there more this year. So I got drawn to your channel several years ago through a series called Rail Fanning by Location. Is it possible for you to reboot that? Ah yes, Rail Fanning by Location. For those of you who don't know, Rail Fanning by Location was a video series that I started in 2009 when this channel was still pretty small. I discussed some interesting places to watch trains, and I think I made maybe seven episodes or so of that, and then I got busy with some other projects, so it kind of ended. At this point, I'm not sure Rail Fanning by Location will come back, but it is always a possibility if I think there's enough of a demand for it. The episode of Train Talk about the Tehachapi Loop that I did last year was kind of in that same spirit of rail fanning by location, and I plan to do more episodes of Train Talk about train watching hotspots this year, so keep an eye out for those. Do you know that 2017 marks 15 years since you filmed your first train and also 10 years since you first joined YouTube? Yeah, I guess it does. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So the next question this is actually a series of... I think 10 different questions, so let's take a look at this. All right, so first, could you try visiting these locations? Virginia and Truckee Railroad in Virginia City, uh, Nevada State Railroad Museum, Disneyland Railroad, and the um, Independence California, the SP narrow gauge number 18 that they have up there. Uh, well, I've been to the Virginia and Truckee and the Nevada State Railroad Museum before. Um, both of them appeared in Steam Trains Galore 2. It's possible that I'll make a return there and to Disneyland, but like the Western Maryland question that I answered earlier, my priority right now is filming things that haven't already appeared on my channel. As for Southern Pacific Neuro Gauge number 18, that's definitely on the list, but I'll probably wait until it visits some other railroad for a special event. Are you going to try to film Santa Fe 2926 and Chesapeake in Ohio 1309 when they're restored? Yes, I'll definitely try to film both of them at some point, but no guarantees if that will be this year or not. We'll see. What are some locomotives and cars that are currently not undergoing a restoration or rebuild that you'd like to see restored? Hmm, that's an interesting question. There's so many, it would be hard for me to really narrow it down, but probably if you're talking about steam locomotives, it would either be the Southern Pacific Cab Forward number 4294, uh, one of the Chesapeake and Ohio Allegheny locomotives, or one of the New York Central Mohawk locomotives. If you're talking about diesel locomotives, the Santa Fe F7 at the California State Railroad Museum, or an Amtrak F40, I'd like to see one of those you know, fully restored. Uh, for electric, it'd have to be the GG1 or possibly an AE, Amtrak AEM7 restored to operation. What locomotives or cars currently undergoing restoration are you the most excited to see when finished? Probably the uh, Santa Fe 2926, the Union Pacific Big Boy number 4014, Chesapeake and Ohio Berkshire number 2716, and the Alaska Railroad number 557. 
What are your favorite railroad cars? If you don't count self-propelled cars, I'd say the Southern Pacific Streamline Daylight Cars built by the Pullman Company. Are you more into mechanics or history of trains? Definitely history, although I am fascinated with the mechanics as well. Do you prefer steam or diesel? Steam. Uh, what are your favorite movies with trains in them? Probably The Great Locomotive Chase and Back to the Future Part 3. Could you do a movie trains galore video in which you show your footage of trains that were used in feature films and television? Yeah, I could potentially do something like that, although it might lend itself better to an episode of Train Talk. Do you think you could try making videos to help support funding for locomotives and other pieces of equipment in need of restoration? I'd be happy to do that, but so far nobody's contacted me about that. So if you have a group in mind, let us both know. If you had the money to buy any locomotive you want, what would it be and why? And the paint scheme. <laughs> You mean I have to pick one? <laughs> well, since this channel is Coaster Fan 2105, probably Coaster Locomotive number 2105 and the Coaster Scheme. Although I'd settle for an Amtrak F40 or even an AEM7. <laughs> if Union Pacific does a Big 3 gathering after the Big Boys are stored, will you get video of it? I'd definitely try to get video of that if that ever happens. Will you do Model Trains Galore? I really, really want to do that this year, but we'll see what happens. Of course, I think I said that last year, too. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I'll try. I, I promise I'll try to do it this year. Will you do a Train Talk episode on the Union Pacific 844? At some point, I'd like to do an episode on UP 844 and the Union Pacific Steam Program, but since I only use my own video clips and photos for Train Talk, it'll probably have to wait until I get more video of 844. How old were you when you started liking trains, and when did you start rail fanning? I've liked trains since I was a very young kid, I'm not exactly sure how old I was, and I started filming in December of 2002. From all the heritage units made by Union Pacific and Norfolk Southern, which ones are your favorite? I really like the New York Central one, and I also like the Rio Grande unit. I actually have two questions, if that's okay. Certainly. Uh, do you think you'll ever do a Train Talk episode on Steam Whistles? And what's the name of the song at one minute? I've been trying to figure that out for a while. Um, <laughs> I will definitely do a Train Talk on Whistles, and it will probably be this year. The song in the year in review video that you're referring to is called Auld Lang Syne. And if you're not sure how to spell that, just click on the little closed caption option and you should be able to see that because I'm trying to do closed captioning on all my narrated videos now. So Mike, is Amtrak number 42 a veterans unit or a heritage unit? I would say that it is probably not a heritage unit because it commemorates veterans and not the history or heritage of the railroad. Great video, can you do a trains in Orange County please? Thanks, and yes, I'll try to film more trains in Orange County this year and put some sort of a video together with that. How often do you go rail fanning, and does it interfere with your work everyday life a lot? Well, I go on a few big filming trips a year unless there's something else that comes up like the AEM7 excursion. It doesn't interfere too much with the rest of my life because I try to fit as much as I can into the time I have to work with. Are you going to do any filming of the California Railway Museum, including the steam train ride, anytime soon? I filmed a few of the excursion trains at the California State Railroad Museum, including the steam locomotive they have there back in 2015, and that's in uh, Steam Trains Galore Part 3. And there's also some other clips of some of the other trains in uh, Passenger Trains Galore Part 2 that just came out at the end of November. I may go back there at some point, but it may not be this year. How do you know what time the train is coming? Well, there are a number of ways. With passenger trains, I usually just go off the schedule. You can also track all Amtrak trains using certain websites or apps. Freight trains are a little harder. You usually have to listen to the train crew communications over a radio or scanner, or you just have to wait for something to come by and hope you're lucky. There's also a lot of train discussion websites on the internet where people talk about some of the freight trains that run on a regular schedule, so you can kind of use what people have said on there to, to plan out you know, when they're going to usually come by. Where do you find running steam locomotives? 
There are certain tourist train guidebooks where you can find a lot of that information. There are also many different websites where you can find out where all the operational steam locomotives are in the United States. I think one of them is called steamlocomotive.info. What state do you live in? I currently live in California. What impact do you think Donald Trump will have on trains in the next four years? Uh, also, great video. Well, since this channel's really about trains and not politics, I don't really want to get into the politics of it, but I'd just say in general that it's really too early to tell at this point. Any number of things could happen, such as an increase in freight traffic or some passenger rail improvement projects like the Hudson River Tunnel project between New York and New Jersey, or maybe none of that'll happen. We'll just have to wait and see. Why don't you rail fan Lucadia? Well, I do from time to time. I have clips from Lucadia in my coaster video from last year. There's just so many good places to visit. What's the flame or flashing thing under the engine? I think what you're referring to is the flicker from the fire in the firebox of a steam locomotive. The fire heats the water, which expands and then turns into steam, which is then used to move the train. And finally, are you going to film New York City trains? Yes, I'll definitely be filming trains in New York in the future. So, if you want to see me do that this year, be sure to vote for it in the poll. Well, thanks for watching the 2017 video update and Q&A. If you have any other suggestions for me, leave them below. You can also get updates and see bonus content by liking the CoasterFan2105 Facebook page and following CoasterFan2105 on Twitter. I also want to thank all of you one more time. It's really been amazing to see what's happened with this channel, and none of this would exist without you, so a big thank you. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.